Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm out here on the Tennessee River this morning getting set up for some kayak catfishing. The sun is behind the camera there and it is getting ready to pop up over the horizon and I'm hoping some fish get active and pop up over this drop that I'm set up on. I'm anchored down here in 27 feet. I'm at the edge of this creek. This creek comes out here and drops off pretty sharp. And so I'm hoping where I'm positioned as fish get active, move up into this creek, my baits are gonna be sitting there waiting on them. Now for bait today, these fish can have anything they want as long as it's gizzard shad. I've got some on ice we're going to cut up and I've got some in the bait well there that we're going to use live. So I'll have two rods with live gizzard shad and two with cut gizzard shad and as long as them fish got a taste for it they can have it. If they want something different well they're out of luck. They just gonna have to work on back into this creek and find them something else. But we're gonna soak these baits a few hours see what we can hook into. All right there's the first victim. Let's send him down and see what he can do for us. Opened up my bait well there. I got a couple shad that are floating. They didn't make it through the night. So that is disappointing because I didn't have very many in there. But we'll see what we can catch on the few we got. All right, victim number two. As the sun finally peeks up over there, over that tree line. It's about 7 a.m. I'm getting a little bit later start than I'd hoped. I just always seem to be running behind, y'all. <laughs> Day late and a dollar short, right? <laughs> There's that bait, just a small gizzard shad head. I kept my biggest gizzard shad that I caught yesterday. I put them in the bait well, keep them alive. I wanted to have them, hopefully have them good and fresh. I wanted to either use them today as live bait if those were catching fish or just have them available alive to be cut so that they're super fresh. A couple of them in there, like I said, they floating. They didn't make it through the night. It's tough to keep shad alive in a small bait tank that's suitable size for a kayak. It's hard to do. They're finicky fish. There's that, just a small body section. We'll send these baits down and see what do for us. So I'm going to put in a few hours this morning. And hopefully we get some big catfish, either blues or flatheads, that make their way up in here. Here we go. Oh, look at that, man. Look at that one pulling. Heck yeah. We're getting the day started off on the gizzard shad body section. Boy, he's going to pull now. Yeah. That's my smallest bait out there. We're probably, I don't know what time it is right now. I'd say we're probably 20 minutes or so into this trip. That's encouraging. Makes me feel a little bit better about getting out here kind of late. <laughs> I'm just not a morning person. I love the morning bite. But that whole process of getting up early, that's the part that gets me every time. <laughs> I set the alarm with good intentions. And then I hit the snooze button with bad intentions. <laughs> Let's get this fella up here and take a look. I think it's probably gonna be a blue cat right here, the way he's the way I feel him moving. Let's see. He's got to be close, man. I'm only fishing 27 feet deep, so my baits are down about 25 feet deep. There ain't a ton of line out down there. Well, he has fought hard, man. I'm seeing bubbles now, finally. That's a good blue, man. I've seen his tail. I haven't seen all of him yet. Oh, yeah. That's the way to start out the morning, folks. That'll do it, man. Heck, yeah. Uh-oh. That rod right there got hit, too. Look at that one. Let's set him back. Let's set him back and pick up on this one. That's on that gizzard shad head now. We'll let that other one tire himself out while we deal with this one. 
getting some active fish moving into this creek, y'all. They've just come up over this drop. My baits are the first thing they run into. That's how I like to do it. I like to set up in places where I'm gonna intercept them. That ain't what we wanna see right No, that's a flathead. <laughs> I saw the brown on him. I saw the brown, I thought that was an old channel cat that I hate so bad. That's a small flathead right there. Let's bring the flathead in first, y'all. We'll go ahead and land him, let that big blue tire itself out a little more. He's that one's full of wee wee and vinegar this morning, so. Let's get that little fella up there. Just a small flathead. I saw him come up and I saw the brown. I was like, oh, that's one of them dang old channel cats. That's a little flatty. Okay. There he is. Let's let him go. And I'll tell you what I want to do since we got active fish moving right now. I want to go ahead and get this bait back down there before we land this other one. Because right now, with them other two baits being live baits, I don't have any, any cut bait down there. Mouth that thing's kind of tore up, so I'm just gonna, we're gonna run it through the back like that. We'll drop it down, then we'll land this big in here. Y'all. Y'all, I gotta be careful with this one because he's got another hook in him. We're gonna get it out first. Look at that hook right there. That is some heavy line on a small hook. Folks, if you're coming out here on the Tennessee River to do some catfishing, don't use them small, tiny hooks like that. That's, folks, you're gonna just fishing out here, man, you're, such a probability of hooking into a monster at some point. If you're in the right place, don't use that. Don't use that cheap gear like that. They just gonna break you off and break your heart. This hook I've got here, that's a 10 aught mustad demon circle. That fish wasn't going nowhere. And my rods are light enough action that they're fun to catch smaller and big fish on but my line is heavy enough that even though my rods are lighter my line size allows me to land big fish like this and this folks is a good fish look at that man that's awesome <laughs> that's how i wanted to start my day uh oh i got a gizzard shad up here y'all there he goes there he goes that live gizzard chad got to eat. Oh yeah, let's reel down. Let's reel down on him. Oh, live one got. Eat them fish are active right now, man. They're moving up. There's a school of them coming in. This one here ain't gonna turn out to be very big though. Hopefully we get our bait back. We'll use it as cut bait if it died. Yeah, that's a smaller blue right there. Let's get rid of this big one here first and then we'll land the small one. Okay, y'all. One last look here. I'll tell you what, let me just throw him on the board here for you. We'll put him on the board, get a quick length. And we gotta get some base back down the water. Y'all, that fish right there is over 39 inches, man. Great fish. What a way to start out the morning. All right, man. Over 39 inches. Heck yeah. Well, let's let him go. See you, buddy. You were a fun time. And he's out of here. All right, we got this little one over here on the live shad, but I gotta get another bait on this rod first. I wanna get another bait down there and get it soaking, man. Okay, folks, that last one, that last big fish anyway, ate a small gizzard shad body section, so that's what we'll send down on this one. I aim to please. We'll give them what they want. All right, now let's land this little devil that ate my big gizzard chad. All right, there's that one. Just a little dink. He had him a big appetite this morning. Let's put another live bait on there, how about it? All righty, another live gizzard chad. Down to the depths. My line untangled. There he goes. That was fun, y'all. Three fish, just boom, boom, boom. Love it when that happens. 
Oh Lord, look at this thing right here now. You know you've got a whopper on when they act like that. <laughs> he's pulling with everything he's got though. He just ain't got very much. <laughs> we'll pull him up here and get a look at him anyway. He might be worth looking at. No, he ain't worth looking at either. That's one of them danged old channels. I conjured one up. I mentioned the channel cap when I saw the brown on that flathead earlier. And just me saying the word channel cap has conjured one. Little demons. Little devils stealing my bait. Well, there's that old ugly thing. Old channel cat. Don't want to ever, ever, ever see them things. But we just did. <laughs> he stole my bait too, of course. So, alright. We'll put another one on there and hopefully avoid his friends. Rod got hit right there. There it goes. There it goes. That's on the gizzard chad body section again. Oh, man. Holy cow, he's pulling, buddy. <laughs> I about lost the grip on the rod on that. <laughs> that was a close call. That was a very close call. Oh, he's back here my anchor rope too. I think he's... There he goes. There he goes. He's in my dang anchor rope. He just come off, I think. No, there he come. <laughs> this fish... I lost the grip on the rod. About got it ripped out of my hands. And then he got my anchor rope. All for this little fish right here. <laughs> well, that'd been something. If it finally happened, I finally get a rod ripped out of my hand. And it's on a dink sized fish like that. <laughs> Boy, look at that thing. Man, he's ornery. Let's let him go. Get him on out of here. Well, that was a close call, y'all. I about lost that rod. <laughs> that would have been something. I'll tell you what, though, if nothing else, I'm having some fun out here this morning. This ain't nothing I'd rather be doing. Y'all, I want you to look at that rod right there. I guarantee you that's a flathead on there. Look at the action on it. There's weight on there. I never felt him hit it. I just glanced over and I noticed my rod acting kind of funny like that. There he goes. There he goes. I'm just going to let him do it to himself. I'm just going to let him hook himself. Pull this old flathead up here. I just want it. Felt the need to eat him a live gizzard chad this morning. Uh oh. Uh oh. Look at that in up there. That rod up there got hit too. Oh, there it goes. There it goes, man. I tell you what. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with this one in my hand first. We'll get him up here and take a look and then we'll pick up on the other one. There he is, just a small flathead there. I'm gonna set him back. Now let's pick up on this one. We'll see if this one here is any bigger. I don't believe this one's gonna be much bigger than the other one. It ain't. It's another baby flathead. I mean, that's a tiny thing right there. Look at him. All right, y'all. Just a baby right there. I mean, that thing is tiny. That was a big gizzard chad for a small flathead. You know, it's funny, when I'm using bigger live baits, when I get a blue on them, they're usually pretty good size. When I get a flathead on a live bait, it's usually a real small one. <laughs> Why that is. Well, let's let that little devil go. See you, buddy. Let's go ahead and land this one. He ain't much bigger. This one here ain't much bigger. We gotta, we gotta tell these small flatheads to stay off in live baits now. I won't either their grandma to come get it or Big Blue. <laughs> They're cute little things though, ain't they? They'll grow up to be monsters. Someday. Alright. Well, 
Let's get our live bait situated, get them back on there, and we'll do it again. All right. There goes the first one down. Got another one here. He's about dead. I didn't have a whole lot of live shad, and like I said earlier, two of them had died when I got out here, so this may be the end of them here. I'll have to check my tank here in a minute. Look. Well, this was the last shad here in my bait tank, and he just barely moving, so since he wasn't very lively, I decided I'm going to go ahead and cut him. We'll put a kind of a half of, basically half of him there. He wasn't very big anyway, but we'll drop him down, so. That one right there is our last live gizzard shed. It dinks have cleaned us out of what little live bait we had, but got plenty on ice there in the cooler, so we ain't gonna run out of bait today. We're just gonna be going cut bait after that one there's gone. You know, there's weight on that front rod up there. It got thumped and there it goes. There it goes. Oh yeah, man, yeah. felt a thump when I turned the camera on and I couldn't tell if he was on there right away but there he is we got him I'm just gonna go ahead and assume it's a flathead the way he hit it is he's wound up <laughs> he ain't very big he's got some spunk All right, y'all, he gave us our bait back. That one ate that half a gizzard shed. Just another small flathead. That's been the theme of the morning out here with these flatheads. They've all been about this size, but they all cool fish, man. I like getting them. Let's let him go. See if we can get some more, man. It's been a long time since that last fish. Let me see what time it is here. It's now 10.07. Man, the bite was on this morning there from the time I got started till 8.30ish or so. And then I've sat here a long while uh, without any action until that flathead come along. So hopefully these fish are getting a little bit more active again and we'll get another wave of them come through. You may not hear any commentary from me though if we do from Weed Eater Man over here interrupting everything. <laughs> it's always something when you're trying to film on public water. Old Bill Dance didn't know how good he had it being on them private lakes and whatnot. He never had to deal with any of this. <laughs> Look at that rod right there. I didn't even feel that thing. He was just on it. Probably another flathead. I bet you anything it is. If I'd bet I'd win too. All right, guys, there he is. That may be, that may be tied for the smallest one of the morning there. <laughs> These flatheads, man. This is number five on the morning here. But every single one of them has been tiny. <laughs> That's cool, though, man. Let's let him go. He get big someday. Let's see if we can get one more of them flatheads. What do you say? What do you say, buddy? I think we got another one on here. The way he hit that bait. Yeah, buddy. I was just getting ready to leave, too. Might stick it out a few more minutes. See what else we get. There's another one. <laughs> flathead number six on the day this one ain't very big either but he might be the biggest one of the morning <laughs> hey man they just, these flies they just keep moving on up in here it's been uh, the bite you know it's really slowed the later the mornings went on let's let this one go it's uh let's see what time it is here now 11 19 so I was actually just getting ready to go here shortly. I'm gonna go get some lunch and grab the dog. And it's just a beautiful spring day. It's May 1st when I'm filming this. And it's just absolutely gorgeous out here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go get the dog and take him somewhere, see if we can find him some 
trees to pee on. He loves doing that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, I think that probably will be the last fish of the morning here, unless I just happen to catch one in the next few minutes here before I get packed up. I'll go ahead and just call this the closing of the video. But man, I had a good morning out here. I got that really nice blue cat. Got several fish, you know, all them flatheads and even that dango channel cat. It has been a really fun morning out here. I've enjoyed it. But uh, I guess we'll call this the end of the video and go get that dog and go have some fun outdoors somewhere today. But I'll see y'all again real soon. Thank you for watching. Hang on, y'all. We got a bonus fish right here. It ain't over yet, man. It ain't over yet. We got another one coming through. Oh, gizzard shad getting it done here. We just thought we was done. That other camera ain't rolling. I'd shut it off, so. Old blue cat right there. Well, guys, my other camera ain't rolling, so we'll just go chest cam only on him. He's small enough he'll fit in the, in the frame, so. All right, there's our bonus fish. I'll see you again soon.